द बैगर्स ओपेरा बाय जॉन गे कैरेक्टर्स समरी एनालिसिस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स जॉन गे वॉज एन इंग्लिश पोअट सटीरिस्ट एंड ड्रामेटिस्ट ऑफ इंग्लैंड हु इज बेस्ट नोन फॉर हिज पैलेड ओपेरा टाइटल्ड द बैगर्स ओपेरा विच ही रोट इन सेवनटीन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी एट Ballad opera was a genre of English stage entertainment that emerged at the beginning of the 18th century as a response to the dominance of Italian operas over the English entertainment stage. The Beggar's Opera proved to be the first successful ballad opera and John Gay became the pioneer of this genre. John Gay was a satirist and a prominent figure of the Scribblers Club whose other members included Alexander Pope, Jonathan Swift, Henry St. John and Thomas Parnell. The group often worked in collaboration to create political and societal satire and to avoid any repulsive offense against their writings. They created a fictional figure titled Martinus Scribblers through whose writings they accomplished their satirical aims. The Beggar's Opera satirically lampooned Vix politician Robert Walpole, notoriously known as the Great Corrupter. In addition, the opera also satirizes then famous criminals including Jonathan Wild, the thief taker, Claude Duval, the highwayman, Charles Hitchin and Jack Shepard, the prison breaker. Characters of the Beggar's Opera Mr Peachum is the leader of the biggest syndicate of criminals who betrays or discards his thieves, highwaymen and prostitutes when they are no longer useful to him. He is based on Jonathan Wild. Polly Peachum is his young beautiful daughter who falls in love with the highwayman Mr Macheath and marries him without the consent of her parents. She remains totally devoted to him. Mrs Peachum is Polly's mother. She is an aide to her husband and understands his business. Lockett is the jailer of private police or thief catchers. He is an associate of Mr Peachum who aspires of becoming an independent crime lord. He also runs a syndicate of lesser strength. Lockett is based on Charles Hitchens. Lucy Lockett is the daughter of Lockett who also loves Mac Heath. She despises him for marrying Polly instead of her but still has a great passion for him and continues to try to win him back from Polly. Diana Trapes is a former prostitute who is now the head of the female gang criminals who work under Mr Peachum's direction. Mac Heath is a highwayman who worked for Peachum but then broke away and began his gang of criminals. He is liked by common people for his Robin Hood kind of activities. His character is based on Jack Shepard, the prison breaker, who was also known as the Honest Jack. He is a womanizer who do loves and marries Polly, has many other lovers. Filch is a petty thief working for Mr Peachum. Jenny Diver and Suki Tawdry are two thieves of Peachum's gang who conspire with him to catch Mac Heath. Dolly Trull, Betty Doxy, Mrs. Fixon and Mrs. Slamkin are other female criminals of the Peachum's gang who worked with Mac Heath before he left Peachum's gang. He is a womanizer who had relationships with each of them in the past. Bob Booty is a thief working for Mr. Peachum. Mr. Peachum is not satisfied with him and blacklists him to be caught and punished. Bob Booty was the nickname of Robert Walpole. The Beggar and the Player are two friends who introduce the play. The Beggar is the author of the opera within the play and he reappears at the end of the play to discuss and revise the story's ending. Summary of the Beggar's Opera. It is a three act play. In the beginning, the beggar appears and introduces the characters to the player. The beggar is the author who says that though his opera contains no recitative prologue or epilogue, it should be considered as he assures the audience that his play follows all other conventions of the day's fashionable operas. Mr Peachum appears and justifies his actions as a thief catcher while he is the leader of the biggest syndicate of criminals in London. He is preparing the blacklist of unproductive thieves and criminals who no longer are profitable and thus will be caught. He in return will get the rewards declared on them. As Mrs Peachum hears that he is adding Bob Booty to that list, she protests and advises him not to do so as Bob Booty is very powerful and may harm them. 
Mr. Peacham is indifferent. He rather laments over his suspicion that their daughter Polly is romantically involved with, with a notorious highway robber Macheath. He instructs Mrs. Peacham to anyhow stop Polly as it will harm his business. He stresses that Polly must not marry Macheath or else her money and potential earnings will default to Macheath. Mrs. Peacham calls Filch to enquire about Polly. Filch is reluctant to in, in revealing secrets of Polly. Mrs. Peacham takes him away to enquire differently. Polly appears and tells his father not to worry as she is just flirting with Macheath to gain goods and gifts. Mrs. Peacham reappears again and outrages. As Filch has revealed to her in effect of alcohol about the recent marriage of Polly and Macheath. When Peacham comes to know about this, he shouts. Polly confesses that she married Macheath because she was seduced and she needed to safeguard her reputation. Mrs. Peacham asks how she will support such a husband who is too much involved in gaming, drinking and whoring. Mr. Peacham says that Macheath is a successful robber who must have made a huge fortune. Mrs. Macheath suggests that the marriage of Polly with him can turn out to be profitable to them if he is caught and killed as then his fortune will be legally transferred to Mr. Peacham, his father-in-law. Polly protests against this but is ignored by her parents. She immediately goes to her bedroom where Macheath is hidden. He vouches his fidelity for Polly and Polly informs him about her parents' plan and tells him to go away and meet her again at safer times. Macheath flees away from Peacham's house and visits a tavern where there are many women who are prostitutes, pickpockets, thieves and robbers. Despite their class, all of them are well-mannered and behave like ladies. Yet, the subject matter of their discussion is pickpocketing, shoplifting or robbing. Macheath is soon surrounded by some beautiful buxom girls. Two of them are Jenny Diver and Suki Tawdry who have been sent by Mrs. Peacham to catch Macheath. Jenny Diver seduces Macheath and brings him to a corner in solitude where she and Suki Tawdry offers him excessive alcohol and he loses consciousness. As he regains, he finds himself in a cell at Newgate Prison. Jailer Lockett is a corrupt man who is an associate of Mr. Peacham. His daughter Lucy Lockett visits Macheath and scolds him for agreeing to marry her and then breaking his promise. She tells him that to see him tortured would give her pleasure. Macheath tries to pacify her but soon Polly also arrives and confronts Lucy, claiming that Macheath has already married her. Lucy gets outraged and makes Polly go away. Macheath tells her that Polly is telling a lie and she is a crazy girl who is trying to force him to marry her. He says he just pretended to marry her to save himself from her father's wrath. Lucy accepts his lies and helps him escape jail by stealing her father's keys. When jailer Lockett enquires her, she says that Macheath has promised to marry her. Jailer Lockett then gets worried that if Macheath is recaptured and killed, then Mr. Peacham will claim half of his wealth as legally he is the father-in-law of Macheath. He meets Peacham and both agree to divide Macheath's fortune between them after he is recaptured and hanged. Polly learns about the new accord between Mr. Lockett and her father and decides to meet Lucy to take her help in protecting Macheath. Lucy thinks that if Polly is killed, she will have no hurdle in marrying Macheath and thus tries to poison her. Polly narrowly escapes the poisoning and convinces Lucy that Macheath's life is in danger as all of the criminals must be pursuing to catch him for the rewards Mr. Lockett and Mr. Peacham have announced. A guard of the prison informs that Macheath has been recaptured with the help of Mrs. Diana Trapes who got him inebriated. Both girls get worried and approach their fathers to beg mercy for Macheath. Mr. Lockett and Mr. Peacham are too greedy. However, their plan to kill Macheath and divide his fortune among them is open to all. 
four female members of criminal gangs Dolly Trull, Betty Doxy, Mrs. Vixen and Mrs. Slamkin visit McHeath in the prison with claims that they are pregnant with his child to gain a right in his fortune. Lockett and Peachum realize that it won't be easy to capture McHeath's fortune and decide to accept their daughter's request to forgive McHeath. However, McHeath cannot fathom taking responsibility for these women claiming to be pregnant with his child and begs to be hanged. The beggar appears again in the penultimate scene and discusses with the player that though the poetic justice suggests that McHeath and the other villains should be hanged, the audience demands a happy ending. So they inform that McHeath has been forgiven and invite everybody to dance and celebrate the wedding party of Polly and McHeath. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.